What would happen if you were to stop using your cell phone before bed for just 14 days? This is going to be very interesting. The majority of the population uses their cell phone before bed, and there's two big reasons why they should not do that. But if they do use a cell phone, there are several things you can do to minimize the problem with this. The first problem with your cell phone and other mobile devices is this thing called blue light. In the spectrum of visible light, the first band of light is the blue light. Blue light powerfully suppresses melatonin. Melatonin is the hormone that helps you go to sleep at night. If your melatonin is too low, you're going to have a hard time going to sleep and the quality of sleep is not going to be that great. And this is going to lead to a whole bunch of problems the next day. Now, you're probably asking yourself, like, why out of all the different uh, types of color, why is blue the one that messes with your melatonin? Now, in order for our bodies to have adapted to the awake and sleep cycles, certain triggers were necessary. You have light and darkness, right? And during the day, what is the color of the sky? Blue. Blue is the most powerful color that suppresses melatonin because during the day you need to be alert. And then when it starts to become nighttime and the sun starts setting, maybe the reddish sunset type colors, those actually don't suppress melatonin. This is why you should not be exposed to blue light before you go to bed. But in the LED lighting system, in your cell phone and the digital devices, you have a more intense version of this blue light. Then even where the sun is at peak at 12 o'clock noon, only 1.5 minutes of exposure to this blue light before bed can start to reduce your melatonin, especially since it's more intense and it's closer to your eyes. Now with the TV screen, it's giving out blue light, but it's further away. It's not as intense, but there's also a blue light therapy to help people with seasonal affective disorder during the winter time. Now, the first thing that comes to mind is, well, why don't I just use a blue light blockers, okay, and wear that before I go to bed so I can keep using this cell phone or a mobile device? Well, there's some fascinating information about blue light blockers, and for that, I'm going to give you a little demonstration right now. Sunglasses do not filter out blue light, and the problem with sunglasses is they lower all of the spectral light to a certain degree equally, but they don't filter the blue. This is a very specific laser that uh, gives just the blue light that we want to filter. And I want to show you something before we get into the blue light blockers. We're going to show you what happens with just regular sunglasses, right? So I'm just going to put this right here and then show you. If we go through the sunglasses, let's test another pair of sunglasses right here. Doesn't really do much, does it? Here's another pair of sunglasses. Does not filter it with a darn. I will say that some of these sunglasses do help you against the UV, so at least it does something. So here's the first one right here. This is a blue blocker. I think it's like $30, $32.95. So let's see what happens with this one. <laughs> it does not work at all. That would be a waste of money. Let's look at this one right here. This is a blue light blocker. Okay, this one's better, but not 100%. Let's check this glasses. So we just bought a bunch of different blue blockers, and you can see... This one does not block the blue out. <sighs> Waste of money. Let's try this one right here. This one works great. This one completely blocks everything out. All right, now let's check the one that costs, I think $2.95. It's this one right here, the cool looking one. Wow, that blocks it really nicely. See that? For three bucks. So I think this is the winner right here, and it looks cool. So I'm gonna put this link down below. Okay, there's one more test we can do with a spectroscope. This is $10. This is gonna just show you what happens when you look at your cell phone. Okay, if you wanna just hold this right here. So when I look into this, you're gonna see there's blue light coming off the cell phone, and this is the problem. It's very intense, it's very close to your face when you're scrolling along. So if you actually were to add something like this, if you wanted to use your cell phone at night and put this in front, and look through there, you can see the blue light disappears. So in other words, if you wanna sleep at night, you wanna wear some type of blue blocking device that really works so you cannot suppress melatonin. Blue light also increases cortisol to a certain degree, and blue light can actually damage the eye if you have too much exposure to that spectrum. Especially if you're sitting in front of a computer all day long and then watching your cell phone at night. Then we get into the topic of the next problem with the cell phone. 
and that is something called EMF, electromagnetic fields, an invisible radiation that affects our whole body. It creates damage within the communication signals in the cell. It also can increase the risk of certain types of cancer and tumor growth because it damages part of the cell. Now, of course, I use a cell phone. A lot of people use a cell phone. It's just a matter of understanding what you can do to reduce that exposure to the EMF. The one that I like is called the Trifield because it's very simple to use and it doesn't just measure the electrical fields and the magnetic fields, but also the radio frequency, as in you know cell tower frequencies, uh, frequencies from routers. And so it's very, very accurate, very, very simple to use. And I've been using this for several years. So I think it'd be a smart thing to, at some point, get one of these units and start measuring the places in your environment that you spend a lot of time, whether it's in front of the computer or it's next to a cell phone. And then you can actually visualize this hidden radiation that's coming off these devices and know how much is being emitted. Like, for example, when I first got this, I went through my entire house and I found uh, there was a tremendous amount of uh, magnetic fields around my bed. I noticed that I had heart palpitations when I slept and I felt really, really tired waking up like more than usual. And that's because I was being bathed in this huge magnetic field. So it's going to affect the quality of sleep, how deep you sleep, and it's going to affect how you feel the next day. In fact, every minute that you use this before you go to bed, there could be a delayed sleep onset by 3.5 minutes. The other thing I want to talk about is uh, REM sleep. So when you go to sleep, you go through deep sleep, okay, and then you go to a superficial wave sleep, which is called REM sleep. And so it kind of cycles through every 90 minutes, up and down, up and down, versus the deep delta wave sleep has a lot to do with repairing the physical body more than the mental repair. Let's demo out what happens when your cell phone is close to your skull. What we're trying to do is we're trying to have you take this cell phone and keep it as far away from your head as possible under speaker mode so you will not uh, affect melatonin and you can actually sleep like a baby. Now, there's a lot of other things that affect melatonin, alcohol, caffeine, nicotine, stress before bed. And of course, we also have temperature. If the temperature is higher, like 75 degrees Fahrenheit, your sleep quality is going to be very poor. But there's a range between 60 degrees and like 69 degrees that you're going to find that you're going to have much better sleep because when you go to sleep, your core temperature does drop by one to two points. People that have insomnia have a higher core temperature. Now, what's the problem with crappy sleep? It's the next day. Okay, how you feel. It's your energy level. It's your ability to be productive, your ability to have cognitive function and have focus and concentration and creativity. I had a problem with sleep for literally, I'd say, 12 to 15 years. At one time, I had restless leg syndrome. The other portion of the time, I just would wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning, and it was my cortisol that was just way too high. Of course, I never really looked at my diet, but that was really behind this whole thing. I didn't even use a cell phone before bed, and I used to then try to do a sugar coma by consuming a pint of Ben & Jerry's before bed so I could sleep, but that is a very stupid uh, solution because you would wake up feeling groggy. So what happens when your sleep is crappy, you're gonna feel like crap the next day, but also you have a higher risk of having blood sugar problems. The risk of type two diabetes goes up by 48%. There's a risk of dementia by 33% and a 30% risk of developing uh, depression, probably because you're just exhausted. So there's many simple things you can do to reduce this effect of blue light and EMF. Let's say you have to use your cell phone, uh, then just wear blue light blockers that actually work. When you use your cell phone, use the speaker phone. Don't hold this thing close to your brain, okay? And just by eliminating that certain blue light, that's going to make a huge difference in your melatonin. And also, if you're around uh, a campfire, or you have candles, or you have a fireplace, all of that gives off infrared, which can also increase melatonin. So there are huge benefits of not using that cell phone before you go to bed. And I gave you a little introduction to the EMF. There's more to know about that. And for that, I put up this video right here. Check it out.